Tonight's last speaker will be Detroit's Gary Wiggins. I think the panel will move back to the audience in order to see the performance. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it is quite an honor to be invited to take part in the Berlin Dialogues. I would like to especially thank Mr. Bars, who I met here in Berlin when he interviewed me for his PhD dissertation entitled Internal Triangle. I must repeat that it is an honor to be among such scholars and to discuss and analyze jazz and the couture nation. However, I must acknowledge that jazz is only one of the many genres of the African American culture. To not recognize the other elements of expression will leave a void of some kind, even in the music of jazz. What I am trying to say is, that it all goes hand in hand. Blues, soul, rhythm and blues, gospel, and jazz. It's all music that we will hear in the course of any given day. I was a teenager in Detroit during the heyday of Motown Records. It was an exciting time when we'd all be waiting for the next round of hits to be released and played on the radio or in the local record shops usually every three to four weeks. There were a lot of cool people making real cool music and each one was different from the other with their own style and sound. Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, Junior Walker, Aretha Franklin, George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic. All Detroiters and all a big influence on the Detroit groove. The best way I could sum up the many rhythms, colors, and expressions of our music today is in a clip from Spike Lee's movie, Do the Right Thing, when Samuel L. Jackson portrayed the part of the radio DJ. Please pay attention to the names acknowledged. Here's the clip. Molly Ma, Olatunji, Chuck D. Molly Ma, Olatunji, Chuck D. Ray Charles, EPMD, EU, Alberta Hunter, Run DMC, Stetsasonic, Sugar Bear, John Coltrane, Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Luther Vandross, McCoy Tyner, Biz Marquis, New Edition, Otis Redding, Anita Baker, Thelonious Monk, Marcus Miller, Branford Marcellus, James Brown, Wayne Shorter, Tracy Chapman, Miles Davis, Force MDs, Oliver Nelson, Fred Wesley, Maceo, Janet Jackson, Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, George Clinton, Count Basie, M. Toomey, Stevie Wonder, Bobby McFerrin, Dexter Gordon, Sam Cooke, Parliament Funkadelic, Al Jarreau, Teddy Pendergrass, Joe Williams, Wynton Marsalis, Phyllis Hyman, Sade, Sarah Vaughn, Roland Kirk, Keith Sweat, Cool Mo D, Prince, Ella Fitzgerald, Diana Reeves, Aretha Franklin, Bob Marley, Bessie Smith, Whitney Houston, Dionne Warwick, Steel Pulse, Little Richard, Mahalia Jackson, Jackie Wilson, Cannonball and Nat Adamy, Quincy Jones, Marvin Gaye, Charles Mingus, and Mary Lou Williams. We want to thank you all for making our lives just a little brighter here on We Love Radio. Many years ago, one of my oldest friends, Mr. Kenny Jackson, a keyboarder in Detroit, told me that an old man told him one should find their stride, what it is that they like and feel that they will be good at and stick to it. It was during this time that I realized and decided that the music I lean towards more is blues and gospel. While seeking out this community, I found myself in the heart of the Chicago blues scene. A year later, I found myself in Osnabrück, Germany, a sharp contrast. <laughs> Believe me, there were not many people like me in Osnabrück. However, that made the community a little more interesting and colorful. It was also the first time that I heard the term unofficial ambassador. Once I became established in Europe, I found ways to bring my friends to tour with me. P. 
people like Angela Brown, the late Johnny Hartsman, Big J. McNeely, and the late great Arnett Cobb. During my early years in Europe, while living in Ostenbrook, my private home had become a hangout or a center point for young musicians and especially sax players. It became so much that I convinced, convinced and assisted a friend of mine who owned a corner bar to transform the place to accommodate musicians and to create a center for young musicians to play with each other and hone their craft. In November 1986, the Pink Piano was opened. In February 1987, the Monday Night Jam session was created. The Pink Piano survived until 2002. And the Monday Night Jam session moved to another location and is still well attended every Monday of the year. Because of our initiations and community service, three generations of now professional musicians have been produced as a result. The late great Arnett Cobb performed one of his last concerts in the Pink Piano in October 1988. Arnett passed on the 29th of April, 1989. I would like to show a rare clip of his last recorded interview. Dieser Mann, der sich hier etwas schüchtern durch die Menschenmenge quält, ist einer der größten noch lebenden Jazzmusiker dieser Erde. Dieses Lokal in Osnabrück, in dem er auftreten will, dürfte die kleinste Jazzkneipe sein, die er je betreten hat. Arnett Kopp aus Houston in Texas, 1918 geboren, war und ist Hauptstar des Lionel Hampton Orchesters. Mit den Hits aus seiner Feder wie Smooth Sailing, Cups Idea, Dutch Kitchen Bounce und Flying Home ist er bereits jetzt zu einem US-amerikanischen Jazz-Denkmal geworden. Er verkörpert im wahrsten Sinn des Wortes den traditionellen Swing and Blues. Mit seiner Begleitband Clayton Dyes Gitarre, Kevin Andrews am Piano, Dino Newman Trams und Derek Lewis am Bass fasziniert er hier ca. 100 Gäste, die sich in diesem etwa 30 Quadratmeter großen Raum zusammendrängten. Arnett Kopp, der in allen großen Musicals dieses Planeten zu Hause ist, ein Mann, der zu den wirklich stilprägenden Saxophonisten des Jazz in diesem Jahrhundert gehört, der mit den größten Jazzmusikern zusammen war. Was hat ihn bewogen, in dieser Miniaturkneipe zu spielen? Size of places don't mean anything. It's the feeling of the people wherever you play. You can play in a four by four and with ten people in it. If they happy and enjoying themselves, you just as happy as they are. Zwei in Deutschland bekannte Swing and Blues Musiker, der Pianist Christian Rannenberg und der Saxophonist Gary Wickens hatten es geschafft, den Schwiegersohn und Manager von Arnett Kopp, Steve Williams, zu überreden, diesen Old Man of Jazz nach Osnabrück zu holen. Gary Wickens, der hier mit Arnett Kopp zusammenspielt, übrigens ein Name, den man sich merken sollte. During my early years in Europe, which was in the 80s, 